we see the human rights indicators as the essential tool for policy formulation, for effective implementation and evaluation and impact assessment of the overall human rights framework. So human rights are actually a set of very specific and very measurable concepts and they have been codified, as, as many of you know, in great detail in more than a dozen <coughs> core treaties and declarations uh, and some even specifically referencing uh, indicators. I think we just all need to really keep in mind that that when we're choosing indicators, when statistical agencies and the rest of us who are involved are trying to push for good indicators and choosing indicators, really what needs to be the guiding principles are the relevance and the transformative potential and obviously the human rights as well, the human rights impact. Um, not necessarily the feasibility as narrow, very narrowly measured by, NAS by NSOs. What we're really looking at and what we're really calling for is indicators, rights-based indicators on three levels. So you have the structural <coughs> level of law, policy, you have the kind of process level of how you implement those laws and those policies, and then you have the outcome. And by having those three perspectives, you have you get the full picture and you also, and I think this is important for us in civil society, you also get an important indication of where states fall short of delivering on their commitments. I think the principle of non-discrimination is really at the heart of the human rights framework and you know, within human rights law, there is an allowance for progressive realisation of economic and social and cultural rights, but there is an immediate obligation on states not to discriminate in striving for the achievement of human rights. So measuring non-discrimination um, and inequality is absolutely critical for the implementation of this agenda. So you can say the same thing about central principles of accountability and uh, maximum available resources or progressive realisation, the notion of progress. Uh, how do you know if there's progress if you're not doing measurements? So how is it possible to leave no one behind in this? Part of it is the disaggregation of data. Disaggregation is uh, perhaps the, 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 the most um, Let's say the most important tool that can be used beyond this to make sure that we're paying attention to the groups that we care about. And we've said that what you want to do is to make sure that your categories of disaggregation go beyond what statisticians are used to now, which is usually gender and geography, uh, and expand and, and becomes aligned with grounds of discrimination as understood in international human rights law and as they have evolved uh, uh, in the interpretation of UN treaty bodies. And I think we've come a long way. Um, we have won a few battles, but I think this is the time when we really need to keep our foot on the pedal. Um, all that we have won is at risk. And I think this is the mile where we really need to sort of ensure that we hold member states to account, keep pushing, keep nudging and saying, this is possible.